so let me now try to go to the conversion diversion nozzle and uh, discuss what what happens there uh, very roughly what you can think about is that we already have a conversion nozzle what we end up doing is that we add to this a divergent part and then at the end of this divergent part we have the the back pressure which will be reduced from the value of p naught so let me try to draw the the sketch quickly for this uh, conversion divergent nozzle so again i am dealing with a axisymmetric uh, situation again sorry i have this is my exit plane here is the uh, back pressure which uh, i am able to lower as i want here is the throat okay so this i will call a cd nozzle here is the inlet plane as it was before and again the conditions just before the inlet plane are the stagnation values corresponding to which the velocity of the flow is equal to uh, zero essentially and then i have the flow going from left to right and this is my sorry exit plane already mentioned so up to the throat we have exactly what we just discussed namely a purely convergent nozzle and then i have a divergent part attached to it so again here when i want to start reducing the back pressure uh if the back pressure is equal to the uh, upstream stagnation value p not then again there is no pressure difference to drive the flow and there is absolutely no flow as you keep on reducing the back pressure initially the entire nozzle will behave in a subsonic fashion because the pressure difference is not large enough for the flow to reach the value of uh, one in terms of the mach number at the throat so let me try to draw this again in that pressure distance plot so we start with p over p not uh, equal to 1 and this is the exit plane back side is where we are maintaining the back pressure and lowering it and here additionally i will add that throat location because now we are dealing with a um, conversion divergent nozzle so as far as starting from pb equal to p not is concerned when we have pb equal to p not this corresponds to no flow as you start reducing the back pressure the flow will initiate and uh, initially as i said if the difference between p not and pb is not large enough everything will behave subsonically and going back to that area velocity relation what i have is if everything is behaving subsonically the convergent part will be such that the velocity will increase the pressure will decrease and the divergent part will be such that the velocity will decrease and the pressure will increase let us say this was the value of the the back pressure that i was maintaining so it will smoothly come back to that back pressure so this is all entire subsonic so this will keep on happening until a value of the back pressure is reached corresponding to which the throat pressure becomes exactly equal to p star so you are coming from the top by reducing the back pressure uh, gradually you reach a value of the back pressure such that for the first time in the throat the value of the pressure that is achieved is p star 
So, then what happens is here is my pressure dropping from P naught to P star. Remember it is still the, the, the limiting case of this entire subsonic uh, case. So, therefore, I will slowly go back again this will still be subsonic. However, I will call this as a limiting subsonic case. Why limiting subsonic is because the value of the pressure in the throat for the curve that I just drew corresponds to the critical pressure or the P star value corresponding to your P naught value. So, this particular pressure is a special value in the back pressure, because corresponding to this particular value I am reaching P equal to P star at the throat and the operating condition in the nozzle is something that I would like to call a limiting subsonic. So, you remember that that A over A star relation that we had discussed for every value of A over A star not equal to 1, we said that there are two um, isentropic solutions possible, one was subsonic and one was uh, supersonic. So, in particular now consider the ratio exit area divided by A star. If you look at this exit area to A star, you have certain value for this if you go to the a, a over a star relation corresponding to this particular value and uh, look up for example, in the isentropic flow table, you will come up with two values of the Mach number as I said in the isentropic flow table, one of which is what we have just drawn. So, the limiting subsonic case corresponds to a completely isentropic flow, but fully subsonic through the entire nozzle and will reach some subsonic Mach number at the exit plane here, where uh, your back pressure is getting maintained. Now, while we are on the topic of that A over A star and the two uh, limiting cases, let me also draw the other su supersonic uh, uh, isentropic solution. So, in which case what ends up happening is that that curve will simply come down to something like this. So, if you maintain a back pressure equal to this value, this corresponds to the supersonic solution for this A e over A star value, okay. in which case the pressure continuously decreases from P naught reaches a value of P star at the throat will keep on continuously decreasing and finally, will smoothly reach the value of P b, which you are maintaining at the back pressure. So, this case is what is popularly called as the design condition. Okay. So, the design condition is when the convergent divergent nozzle is operating uh, in a completely isentropic fashion with a supersonic solution in the divergent part. Okay. So, the pressure then that you reach at the exit plane here is uh, what we call a design pressure, design exit plane pressure. And if you go back to your uh, A over A star uh, value whatever this is, you go and you read off from the um, isentropic flow tables that corresponding to this A exit over A star value, there is one unique value of the uh, supersonic Mach number and if the pressure in the back side is maintained at this value, what you will do uh, is, is to, to, to realize that the exit Mach number will be equal to that value from the uh, isentropic flow table. So, that let me just draw it here m exit design is what you will achieve if the back pressure is maintained at this value corresponding to which the 
the throat pressure is P star, entirely the, the flow is uh, isentropic and supersonic completely through the divergent path. So, these are the two limiting cases that will exist uh, corresponding to the value of A e over A star. One is what we call the subsonic solution, the other one is what we call a supersonic solution. So, now the question is that what happens if we maintain the back pressure in between these two values. So, let me try to, to draw a new figure for this. So, this is the throat location again. So, let me draw for the purpose of reference this uh, limiting subsonic case and the supersonic solution. So, this is subsonic solution. and this is the supersonic solution. So, this is what we called the design condition the supersonic solution. In both cases the pressure at the throat is equal to uh, P star. Now, let us say that uh, this first limiting case corresponded to some specific value of P b, let me call it P b 1 and the second one corresponds to some other value P b 2, the design value here. In between, if you want to maintain the back pressure somewhere between P b 1 and P b 2, what is the situation? So, let us go back to the limiting subsonic uh, uh, case here. Now, let us assume that you are operating with the limiting subsonic case and now you want to reduce the back pressure a little bit from the P b 1 value that you are maintaining to achieve the limiting subsonic case. What ends up happening now is at the instant when you reached this P b 1 value, you reached P star value at the throat and therefore, the Mach number at the throat is going to be equal to 1. So, therefore, if now you reduce the value of P b 1 below the value of or back pressure below the value of P b 1 there will again be the generation of those acoustic disturbances which will try to move up the nozzle and while doing so will try to change the conditions within the nozzle. However, when it comes to the throat location it will experience the same problem as it had when we were discussing the purely convergent nozzle namely that the flow itself has reached the sonic velocity at the throat and therefore, this acoustic disturbance is not able to go anywhere and change any conditions up the location of the throat. So, therefore, beyond the throat nothing changes this remains completely frozen here. On the other hand what ends up happening is that because let us say you are trying to maintain a pressure like this here which is P b 3 let us say that is neither low enough equal to P b 2 nor high enough equal to P b 1 which are the two limiting isentropic solutions. What ends up happening is that because the mass flow rate is chosen the nozzle is essentially forced to flow the, the frozen mass flow rate and the only way this situation is uh, resolved is by generating a little bit of supersonic flow in the, in the uh, divergent part a shock situation occurs and post shock the, the flow becomes subsonic and will slowly reach back the value of P b 3. So, here is a situation where a shock occurs within the divergent portion of the nozzle corresponding to a value of the back pressure that is in between this limiting value of P b 1 and P b 2. Okay. It so happens that 
if you are going close to P B 1, but just below P B 1, this shock will be closer to the throat. Okay. If you go away from P B 1, below toward P B 2, the shock will actually occur at a later cross section. The location of the, the shock simply depends upon the, the back pressure that you are maintaining and uh, the, the, the phenomenon that involves in formation of the shock is exactly the same as what we were discussing yesterday, namely coalescence of uh, uh, individual acoustic waves, etcetera. It is just that here we are dealing with a inherently steady flow situation, but uh, physically there is absolutely no difference between the shock formation that we talked about yesterday and what we are discussing here today. As we are reducing the back pressure, some transient flow take place un, until the, the steady state reach is, is reached and within this uh, transient uh, flow, what ends up happening is that there is that coalescence of individual acoustic waves to form a shock at a certain location within the divergent section. So, going back again to the, the board, what will end up happening is that if, if I want to uh, redraw the, the plot. So, I will now draw only uh, that situation which we are talking about. So, here is where we have reached P star that is not going to change. Further there is a supersonic flow developed which ends in a shock. Post shock this is subsonic as we saw in the yesterday's discussion. This is from here to here this is supersonic. In the throat it is exactly m equal to 1 and this is the value of the back pressure that you are maintaining which is achieved at the end of the exit plane. If you keep on reducing this back pressure what ends up happening is that this shock will keep on moving and at certain value of the back pressure it will actually stand exactly in the exit plane. Let me call this P B 4. So, if you are maintaining this P B 4, the, the shock actually stands in the exit plane. Okay. The value of the Mach number here is exactly equal to the design value. However, the back pressure is not low enough, so that a completely isentropic flow can be achieved, but there is a normal shock that is standing exactly at the uh, exit plane. Now, if you want to reduce the back pressure further, what ends up happening is that there are two possibilities. So, let me draw this in a new figure. throat. Let us say that this situation is such that the, the normal shock is standing here corresponding to which the back pressure is P B 4. This is your uh, design condition. So, anywhere in between this if you employ the back pressure what you generate is what is called as an oblique shock which is outside the nozzle which will eventually reach the, the value of the pressure that you are maintaining. So, this situation is what is called as an oblique shock that is outside the nozzle. And 
as against that under expanded situation which we saw in the case of a purely convergent nozzle, this is what is called as an over expanded nozzle. The reason why it is called over expanded is because the exit plane pressure here is below the, the back pressure that you are maintaining and the back pressure is achieved by uh, increasing the value through the, the oblique shocks outside the nozzle. Again the oblique shock situation is something that we have not studied within our uh, quasi one dimensional um, framework. We cannot really study those for that you have to go to multi dimensional flow analysis. So again when it comes to explaining to the students it is probably sufficient at this level to explain that there is this oblique shock phenomenon that will exist in case of these uh, over expanded nozzles and the oblique shock is actually acting outside the nozzle and it is raising the pressure from this design value in the exit plane to a higher value which you are maintaining outside the nozzle. If you keep on lowering the back pressure you will achieve the design value. Again there is absolutely no waves generation everything is isentropic and this is where you want to typically operate the nozzle in. It is not always possible. So, if you end up lowering the back pressure below the design value of the back pressure what will happen is what we have already seen namely an under expanded nozzle as was the case in the case of a purely convergent nozzle. So, whenever you encounter the words under expanded nozzle what we can understand is that the, uh, the nozzle is such the nozzle is operating such that there is an expansion from the exit plane pressure to the lower value of the back pressure that is occurring outside the nozzle through expansion waves. If on the other hand the nozzle is over expanded we, we understand that there is an increase in the pressure from the exit plane value to whatever value that you are mention, maintaining at the back, uh, back side through a series of oblique shocks which are again outside the nozzle. So, this is how usually the, uh, the nozzle operations are, are described and uh, with the help of our isentropic flow tables and uh, the normal shock tables uh, it is possible to analyze more or less all these situations that we have, uh, we have discussed. Uh, so, what we will do is in the afternoon uh, we will go through a couple of uh, example problems where I will try to outline a few more features of how to solve these uh, some of these problems and uh, post that we will have our discussion session. But I will really request that uh, once we have gone through our afternoon session today uh, you please go back and try to solve the, the remaining uh, problems from the assignment sheet or the exercise sheet because many of these ideas which are described here uh, you know cannot be fully understood unless and until you attempt to solve those, those problems. So, with this I think I will, uh, I will stop this was more or less what I wanted to discuss as a part of uh, introduction to compressible flow in case this topic is uh, introduced in the thermodynamics course. Remember that uh, we have already discussed far more things than what are typically available in the thermodynamics books as compressible flow chapter and the reason is because if you want to explain more details as to what is happening in these operating uh, nozzles and so on you have to uh, utilize ideas from, uh, from fluid mechanics and uh, it may not be possible for the thermodynamics book to really include all those uh, fluid mechanics ideas. And therefore, uh, the way at least I would look at it is that if this topic is included in the thermodynamics course, uh, my suggestion would be to stick to the minimum possible requirements and to provide these additional explanations uh, through the kind of discussion that we, we have already gone through. So, with this I will, uh, I will stop.